All right, hey, good afternoon, everybody. This video is going to be titled The Third Part of the Stars, and I'm referring to Revelation chapter 12, verse 4. So let's take a look at that verse and let's understand the context of what's going on there. I'll give you a second to flip on over there. Revelation chapter 12, verse 4. And his tail drew a third part of the stars and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered for to devour her child as it was born. All right, and if you, if you roll on down to verse 7, the insertion of Michael the archangel shows us what's going on here. And so because in Daniel chapter 12, verse 11, and I'll, I'll, I'll read that to you real quick. Daniel chapter... Daniel chapter 12, verse 11. I'll give you a few, a few seconds to flip on over there as I'm flipping. I'll go ahead and read it so I get there. Daniel chapter 12, verse 11. We know what Daniel's referring to here, right? He's referring to the tribulation. All right, verse 11. And from the time that the daily sacrifice shall be taken away and the abomination that maketh desolate set up, there shall be a thousand two hundred and ninety days. One thousand two hundred and ninety days. So that's the last three and a half years of the seven-year trib. All right, so, um, you know, we understand that Michael is a great prince that stands for thy people, right? The Jews. So we understand the Jewish context of what's going on there. Now let's take a look at, uh, go back on to Revelation chapter 12. We're going to go to verse 17. I'll give you a second to flip there. Verse 17. And the dragon was wrath with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. The woman being referred to here is a nation. That's Israel, right? So let's back up to verses uh, 7 through 9. And I'm going to read those. So same chapter. We're not going anywhere. Revelation chapter 12, verses 7 to 9. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. And the dragon fought and his angels and prevailed not. Neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, the old serpent, called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. So we see this is the greatest rebellion against God, right? So there was a war, and Michael and his angels fought against Satan and his angels. We understand that. He was then cast out down to the earth with his angels. In the book of Job... Job describes angels as stars. And I'm going to go ahead and read to you. I'll give you a second to flip over there. Job 38, verses 1 to 7. Job 38, 1 through 7. Give you a second to flip there, and I'm going to start reading those verses. <clears throat> okay, Job chapter 38, verses 1 to 7. Then the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind and said, who is this that darkeneth counsel by words without knowledge? Gird up thy loins like a man, for I will demand of thee, and answer thou me. Where wast thou when I laid the foundations of the earth? Declare if thou hast understanding. Who hath laid the measures thereof, if thou knowest? Or who hath stretched the line upon it? Upon it? Whereupon are the foundations thereof fastened? And who laid the cornerstone thereof? When the morning stars sang together, and all the sons of God shouted for joy. All right, now we're going to go back on over to the book of Daniel. So the book of Daniel symbolizes God's people as stars, right? And what I'm referring to is Daniel chapter 8, verse 10. So let's read it real quick. Daniel 8, verse 10. Give you a second to flip there. And it waxed great, even the host of heaven, and it cast down some of the host and of the stars to the ground and stamped upon them. So Lucifer wanted to be worshipped 
as God rather than lead in worship of God. God kicked Satan out of his position of the third heaven, right? And confined him to the second heaven, which is the firmament and the earth. There are fallen angels, again, the devil's angels in Matthew 25, verse 41, that are operating in heavenly places in the firmament, right? Where the sun, the moon, and the stars are today. So for example, notice in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12, I'll give you a second to flip over there what Paul says. In Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12, that's where he's talking about our armor, right? How we fight against these um, spiritual beings, right? Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. These fallen angels will be cast out of the second heaven, the firmament, halfway through the seven-year tribulation. Here's where Revelation chapter 12, verses 7 and 9 comes into play. Did I already read those? Yeah, I already read those. So I'm not going to read those verses again just for sake of time. But I already read those. And you saw how, how the devil and Satan, they were all cast down um, after the war between Michael and his angels and Satan and his angels took place. All right, so I'm going to conclude all of this up now. So what is Revelation chapter 12, verse 4 talking about? A third of the fallen angels operating in the firmament will come down to earth sometime during the first half of Daniel's 70th week. The rest of these fallen angels will be thrown out of the second heaven at the 42-month mark halfway through the tribulation. The rest, um, hold on, I'm sorry. Uh, the book of Revelation is future, right? So it's impossible to be time past. It's talking about future events, not things that have already happened. Um, the book of Revelation cannot be historical in nature. Revelation chapter 1, verse 1 clearly says that these are things which must shortly come to pass. They were clearly future from John's perspective. So hopefully this video cleared up some confusion for you. Um, if so, hit the like, hit the like button and share to, to edify others. Um, you know, this was a good, this was a pretty good study that I did. And uh, man, there's a there's a lot going on, and if you don't understand prophecy, if you don't understand these letters from the, from the major prophets, then uh, you're never going, going to understand what's going on in the book of Revelation. So, um, all right, well, grace and peace to you guys.